How's it going, Giants fans? My name is Alex, and my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo, and it's a great day to discuss Evan Neal. We're going to take a look at every single pass blocking snap that he put together against the Cincinnati Bengals the second week of the preseason. Now, first week of the preseason against the Patriots, he had some trouble. He was top heavy. He was unbalanced. Um, and he just didn't really look like the best version of himself. And one week of development and kind of looking over the tape and fixing those things, he looked like an entirely different player against Cincinnati. And for all those stupid ass reports that were saying that he was disappointing so far and this and that, hold your breath, bro. Just, just, just go away. We don't want to hear that negativity. Evan Neal's a very, very good player. A player of his size, that type of athleticism is hard. Uh, to, to find and ultimately you know he put together a really good game against Cincinnati we're gonna take a look at all those clips and showcase exactly what we liked what we didn't like um, still a lot of work left to be done but I'm very optimistic he's going to grow substantially as a rookie maybe even have a better season than Andrew Thomas did as a rookie which gave up 10 sacks as a rook and I think Evan Neal can definitely put together um, a more efficient year uh, and, and obviously if he takes that big jump and gets the level of Andrew Thomas you're looking at two bookend tackles on rookie contracts which is exactly what this team needs for the future but Anthony before we dive into Evan Neal um, discuss him a little bit and then we're gonna jump into the film how are you today my friend I'm doing great I'm excited to dive into the film and take a look at Evan Neal I've been saying for a while hold your horses calm down Evan Neal everyone was like oh my god he's so bad at pass protection he's getting worked by Kayvon Thibodeau in practice everyone's getting the best of him relax he's a rookie Rookie offensive tackles always have growing pains. Everyone, every Giants fan loves Andrew Thomas. We're all like, Andrew Thomas is that boy. He's that man. He is going to dominate this year. He was so good in his sophomore season. Are you guys forgetting all the things that you said about him as a rookie? <laughs> because I swear it's some of the same people that, are, that were criticizing the hell out of Andrew Thomas in his rookie season, saying this was a bust, horrible draft pick. Dave Gettleman sucks. We should have went with Tristan Wirfs or Mekhi Becton, right? They all had so much to say about Andrew Thomas. And then in year two, they're like, amazing pick. Hail Gettleman. Gettleman's the GOAT. Andrew Thomas forever. It's going to be the same thing with Evan Neal. That's just how it is. Rookie offensive tackles have growing pains. They don't all step into the league as a Tristan Wirfs caliber player. They don't all step into the league as a Rashawn Slater type player. So after one week in the preseason, everyone's like, oh, this is going to be a rough year for the Giants. Evan Neal looks terrible in pass protection. It's one preseason game. Now the second preseason game, everyone's like, okay, maybe we were wrong. This guy looks damn good out there. Yet to Cincinnati Bengals, which is exactly what I was saying. Just give him some freaking time. Of course, I'm even going to bet, yes, he had this great performance against the Bengals. Next week, he's probably not going to play. Week one of the regular season, probably going to have some struggles. There's going to be some growing pains there. It's the regular season. It's another level of competition that he still has yet to face. It's going to take him some time to jump that hurdle, but Give him that time. Give him four weeks, and then I guarantee you, you're going to get a much better version of Evan Neal. Week by week by week, offensive tackles, they just learn things. It's one of those positions that you can't really learn from, you know, watching film all the time or studying or putting pen to paper. You have to go out there and you have to experientially learn that position. That's what you have to do. It takes reps, it takes practice, and it takes getting beat up. Failure is where you learn. And Evan Neal, he failed a little bit in that preseason game in week one. Week two, he learned from those failures, and he was a much better player against the Bengals. And expect that to continue to happen for Evan Neal. He's only going to continue to get better. I'm super excited to dive into this film against the Bengals, and of course excited to see what he can do come the regular season. Ah, uh, man, we're expecting a lot from Evan Neal, man. This is going to be revolutionary for the Giants moving forward, especially if you move on from DJ, if you keep DJ, whoever the hell's quarterback, they're going to be in a better spot, right? The tackle spots, like you can have one or two spots in the offensive line that are not tackles. You can have a maybe a questionable situation at left guard, right guard, or center and have two great tackles in your offensive line still play well. Um, as we saw, you know, Pat, like against Cincinnati, Daniel Jones, I haven't seen that man have so much pocket time in ages, and maybe in his entire career. And, um, it's really, really great thing to see. And I know it gets, it's against backups and whatnot, but you know, it's an optimistic kind of viewpoint. And I do hope that it translates to the ones when we play Tennessee in week one here. But let's jump into the film, take a look at what Evan Neal produced against Cincinnati. And, you know, it's good stuff, man. I mean, he's a big dude. He he looked a lot more patient, a lot less aggressive uh, than he did against the Patriots, what I think really stood out in my opinion. So let's take a look here. And also shout out to Nick Filato, who clipped all the all 22 film. Uh, we grabbed from Twitter, so shout out to him. So I appreciate that hard work there, my man, um, doing the Lord's work and the analysis that we all love to see on social media. Uh, but let's take a look here, man. This is this is a definitely an interesting situation for Evan Neal. Was taking a big step forward, had some really good snaps. Good job being patient. You can't bull rush the guy, right? Like you just simply cannot bull rush a man that's 350 pounds. You have to you have to use your speed rush against him. 
He's trying to swat his hands away. Look how good of a job he does just attracting his hands, getting those hands back out inside of the chest plate. I mean, he's mirroring this perfectly. Look at the pocket Daniel Jones here, man. Look at these 1v1. Like, goodness gracious. Ah, oh, man, this, this just makes me so happy. This is just a beautiful sight, Anthony. What is your reaction to this right now? Because, I mean, for goodness sake, this is this is the best pocket I've seen Daniel Jones have since ever. I'm speechless. <laughs> Did you notice that? I couldn't even speak. I've never seen Daniel Jones with a pocket like that. Have you? I've never seen this. This is unbelievable. I know it's only preseason. I don't want to amp it up too much, get too hyped, but I'm having fun here because it's really just refreshing to see a great offensive tackle and Evan Neal, really just a great offensive line across the board. I mean, we were talking pregame. We were like, so many injuries on the offensive line. This is going to spell trouble. We could even see Daniel Jones get sacked tonight. We don't want to see Daniel Jones get sacked. We don't want to see him get hit. Don't want to risk any injuries. But then all these backup offensive linemen come in. They're playing like they're the 2016 Cowboys, right, with that dominant offensive line that they used to have. I mean, again, it's only preseason. But Evan Neal looks like a stud on this play. I think he does a great job with his feet here. I think his feet were really quick, and the hand fighting was great. If you see, there is an initial moment where the uh, – defensive lineman does knock his hands down but it's very quick recovery there so you'll see once he takes this drop um and also i gotta say this is another thing that i talked about in the pregame right where brian dable is a really smart coach he's going to manufacture plays that give daniel jones extra time in the pocket one of the ways he can do that is bootlegs the other way that i mentioned is play action and so right here you got a little play action just leaves the uh the defensive lineman starting off the play in run defense which gives daniel jones just an extra half a second to kind of survey the field because the defensive linemen aren't even pass rushing until the second half of a second right so just keep that in mind as well this is really good scheming to try and get this pocket but again what a pocket for Daniel Jones. I've never seen him with a pocket like that. And, of course, a really great snap from Evan Neal there to just really use good hand fighting and some quick feet. Yeah, and I also want to point out, watch Mark Glowinski and watch Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas here, initially, he gets he gets kind of locked up, bounces off of him, resets. I mean, and look at Mark Glowinski, 1v1 against the DT. I mean, this is beautiful, man. If Evan Neal, Andrew Thomas, and Mark Glowinski can step up and, and have good seasons, which I think they all can, this is going to be an entirely different offense just based on the offensive on play alone. And Glowinski might have been one of the most underrated signings of this offseason. I mean, the Giants got him a three-year, 18 million deal. For that level of quality, if he can maintain that, and he's a really good run blocker too, oh my goodness. I mean, Joe Shane will have struck gold on his first offensive line signing, which, you know, we needed desperately. So let's take a look here. Getting out up front. Look how quick he is. I mean, you see those feet, like you mentioned before, he has quick feet. He's really quick to get to the second level too. Bam, he's there. If there's a blocker, I mean, the the I think Daniel Bellinger whiffs on that initial block, um, and uh, Wandell Robinson gets wrapped up here. But I mean, it's just just a beautiful thing to see Evan Neal with that quickness getting downfield. Oh man, it's just it's beautiful. Just watch watch how he takes that 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 long arm and just raises it, man. Forklifts that arm right up, right here. Bam! Watch this. Lifts it right up. Completely takes away that rush. Completely, and then he just turns his back. And then he just lays on top of him at the end there. That's a beautiful thing, Anthony. I mean, one week of progress. One week we saw from, from Evan Neal. He looked questionable against the Pats. This is a whole different player, guys. The coaching is unbelievable. I have not seen a coaching staff uh, that the Giants have had in the last five years, six years, look this good in, in terms of just preparation, discipline, um, you know, ironing out kinks early on in the, in the season. We're talking about second game in the preseason, guys, and Evan Neal looks like a totally different player. You know, what, what is your reaction to this pass rush right here? Because this is a beautiful, uh, beautiful play by him. Yeah, I mean, this is a beautiful play, as you just mentioned. I mean, it's just the ability to counter, right? The pass rusher comes in and tries to give him a straight arm bull rush. And, you know, that's a, an effective move usually against rookie offensive linemen because a lot of rookie offensive linemen have a trouble with getting their hands up early and they usually leave their chest exposed. So sometimes defensive linemen can just kind of bull rush with one arm. It's a stab move is what they call it, stab into the chest and just kind of lift the lineman up and then push him back with a one arm bull rush. You'll see that a lot, and it'll a lot of defensive linemen will take advantage of rookies with that move, but not Evan Neal. I mean, we got to keep in mind, though, Evan Neal was like consensus number one offensive tackle in this class. A lot of people thought maybe he's the best pound-for-pound -pound talent in this class. Andrew Thomas was a top-tier prospect coming out of his class, but Evan Neal is even on another level. So if you're, you know, if we were expecting some polish out of Andrew Thomas when he was a rookie, you should be expecting even more polish out, out of Evan Neal right now. And I think that's what you're seeing right here. Yes, I know he struggled in the first preseason game, but on a play like this, where he's able to counter what's known to be a very efficient, effective 
pass rushing move against rookie offensive linemen. He counters it, just takes that arm away, and then puts the guy into the dirt. That's a really, really impressive snap. Again, I know it's the preseason. The Bengals didn't play their starters, so this is a backup defensive lineman. Of course, you just got to give it time, see how he does against starters in week one against the Titans. But it's a really good snap just to see how he's responding to certain pass rushing moves and how he's able to counter them with his strong arms and his really good hand fighting skills. Do you have any idea how many times I saw Nate Solder have this exact same uh, pass rush move? I think Marcus, um, I think Marcus Golden actually hit him with this exact move last year and lifted Nate Solder off the ground, lifted him off the ground, guys. Evan Neal just took this to the chest plate and said, "No, no, no! Raise that hand up, use that arm strength, and completely turned and pancaked this man." The, the the difference a rookie to Nate Solder. It, I mean, you wouldn't expect it. But Evan Neal is already a better player by far, and Nate Solder was completely just demoralized over and over again by moves that we're seeing a rookie already have the capability to um, exploit and, and take advantage of. And it's just a, it's a beautiful sight, my friends. This is this is a a really good thing to see from your rookie uh, right tackle here. So this is like one of the few bad plays that he had, and of course he wanted to showcase everything, even the bad ones. He gets completely turned around on this play. Um, he gets a little bit off balance. He tries to, he tries, I think he just kicks out a little bit too wide. Um, loses his balance there. Mark Lewinsky actually saves him a bit. So it's good to have that veteran right guard alongside him, which I think is a huge benefit for him as a rookie. Uh, but he just, he just, I think he just jumps out. So you see his feet get kind of, tw uh, like twisted up at the end there. Um, bad footwork. You kind of want to keep square, uh, make sure that you don't get beat inside. And then, you know, if they do try to use that speed on the outside, then you can obviously jump out. But I think that here, Evan, gets kind of beat, but this is a good learning experience for him. This was Andrew Thomas's big issue as a rookie. He was getting beat inside a lot, which is like a cardinal sin for offensive tackles. Um, so you don't want to be getting beat inside here. I think he'll learn from this. This is one of the few bad snaps he had all day. Um, but I, I'm happy that, you know, at least there's something to work on here. If it was perfect, you know, it would definitely be a kind of a mirage at this point. Yeah, no, I mean, this is going to happen, okay? First of all, the number one places where rookie offensive linemen get beat, it's beat inside. Second of all, this is poor footwork, but it's poor footwork in the sense that it was poor mental part of the game for Evan Neal here, in my opinion. So what I think was happening was that the pass rusher kept going to his outside shoulder. Every snap, the pass rusher was attacking his outside shoulder. So on this play, he made the assumption he's going after my outside shoulder. The way that he started off on this run, I know what he's going to do. Let me just beat him to the spot and demolish him, right? So he jumps. He gets a little too antsy, a little too excited, gets there early. And then all of a sudden, the pass rusher adapts and says, actually, I'm going to take this thing inside. I fooled you. And now I just beat you on this rep. And I think that's what happened, you know, because every play for defensive linemen, we've talked we've talked about this with Kayvon Thibodeau as well. You'll run like the same pass rush move five snaps snaps in a row. And then on the sixth snap, you do something completely different to beat the offensive lineman. And I think that's what happened here with Evan Neal. But again, that's part of rookie growing pains, just learning not to fall for those tricks. He is a rookie. There are going to be tricks that veteran defensive linemen pull on Evan Neal, but he's going to have to learn how to adapt, how to overcome those tricks and how to make these plays not happen to him. So he gets beat on an inside move. You'll see that happen from time to time. He's a rookie. It's a growing pain. But of course, this was an excellent game from him. One bad snap doesn't ruin it. Absolutely not. Let's see here. Getting across the line of scrimmage. All right. Gets kind of a little stunt there. That's yeah, that wasn't the I best mean, stunt pickup by him and Glowinski, yeah. but I will say I love how quickly he fires out of his snap, uh, out of his stance here. If you see that, he's instantly that kick step was lightning quick. He was in stance and ready to go. It almost looked like Glowinski maybe just got a little turn around, maybe a little hung up on a block, and then they kind of switched up or, or the switch just kind of got screwed up there. I think he tried to push him along to Evan Evan Neal, but again, I, the one thing that I do want to point out here though is just how quickly Evan Neal gets off the line. If you watch the other offensive linemen, Evan Neal beats them by a long shot on this one which is just a great way to start every single rep in pass protection be the first one off the line of scrimmage that's what every pass rusher is trying to do so if you're the offensive tackle and you're in your pick slide before the pass rusher is moving across the line of scrimmage you've already put yourself in a good position to succeed yeah also uh, i'll say like this is an ugly stunt pickup but it was it worked i mean dj what i did like to see was dj actually had the wherewithal and look at like you can see the snap look how quickly andrew thomas and evan Neal are off their stance already that's a really good sign you know he knows the snap count he's he's very much proactive and getting out of his uh, stance really quickly to give himself a, an edge. And I think that's going to be um, a huge benefit for him, just understanding that that uh, necessary reaction timing. So 
Uh, here, you know, I kind of, it's definitely an ugly pickup on the stunt, but Glowinski, by the way, gets spun all the way around and still gets in a position where he can make the block. That is veteran stuff right there. That's a really good job by Mark Glowinski. And Daniel Jones, good pocket awareness. He's looking downfield, but he can feel the pressure coming inside. So he rolls out, gives himself a little bit of time. He actually ends up running it. I think he picks up the first down there. So nice job from DJ as well. That was altogether um, an ugly play, but it, ugly play turned into a positive, which is what we have not seen from the Giants the past few seasons. So I think that's a good point to take away. Let's see here. Nice, just stepping on the inside. That's the interception from Bellinger, but you know, hopefully a better off in the future. Let's see here. Now, I like this play here because this shows a lot of awareness. I know I was talking earlier about how he's a rookie. He might have some mental lapses here and there. might get tricked, but this is a really great play. He notices like, okay, this pass rusher is probably coming to me. And then he notices mid play. Oh, the pass rusher going inside. That means someone has to be coming on the outside instantly just shuffles and gets to the spot and actually does provide some pocket security for Daniel Jones to make this throw. He could step into this throw because Evan Neal had the wherewithal to get around and prevent that rusher from hitting his quarterback. This is a really, really good snap here. And this shows very wow. high football IQ. Yes. Initially beat initially. He's like, okay, I just lost this rep because I went after the wrong pass rusher, but I'm going to be faster and stronger and meet this guy to the spot and prevent this guy from blowing up my quarterback. This is a really good play, not only mentally, but also physically, just to have those quick feet to beat that rusher to the spot despite losing the rep initially. Yeah, I mean, he probably knows here. Like, pre-snap information, you're probably thinking, okay, like, this could be a blitz, and obviously you see this defensive edge rusher lined up kind of way outside, and, like, we know Bellinger is going to be chip-locking him. Um, so he kind of gets that chip, gives him just a second, that extra split second. It's just really good communication between two rookies, you know, Daniel Jones, Evan Neal and Daniel Bellinger. You know, you, he has to know, okay, I know my tight ends giving him a chip. I have an extra split second to get out wide and to help the interior, help my running back out with number 44 linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals. And then bam, kick out there and get, and get my, my, uh, my assignment. So that's a really good job. I have a Neal just understanding of the assignment and understanding like how much time he has to react to things. Um, I think to Kenny Galladay, that might've been a good completion. Uh, maybe it should have been let up a little bit, field a little bit more, but still good pocket awareness, um, you know, for Evan Neal. I think that ultimately that was, that was a positive play from him. Let's see here. I'm liking these crossing routes, by the way, really good job. Stonewalling. At really, the line of I'm really liking the new offensive scheme, man. I like the route concept so much. Better. We haven't even seen it it's yet. We've just seen, like a, we've seen a flash of it. Yeah, and so here's another thing that I want to say here, okay? And this is going to relate to the scheme and also relate to the strengths of Evan Neal. We know that Evan Neal is a great run blocker. That's his strength, right? And what are we seeing a lot of from the Giants offense right now? A lot of play action. What does that do for mm -hmm. Daniel Jones? Well, it provides him some extra time in the pocket, but what does that do for Evan Neal? It allows him to run block on a snap where the ball is being thrown. So the Giants are able to throw the ball downfield pick up more yardage like they do here on this beautiful high point pass that David Sills down the sideline. But it also puts their offensive lineman in position to move the pocket a specific way. Watch how the pocket goes an entire way here mm -hmm. because of the play action. There's no one in front of Daniel Jones, right? It's just you got one route and you just throw a nice pass. This is great scheme. And so, again, I'm really liking what we're seeing from Brian Dable, Mike Kafka. I love a play like this. I think this is really smart to just take all of the pressure off of the quarterback here. Let him lay it up there. Throw this up to this big receiver. Make the catch. But this also plays to the strengths of the offensive linemen who are traditionally much better as run blockers. Look at this great run blocking snap from Evan Neal. I know it's in pass protection because it's play action, but it is run blocking principles because they're trying to sell the fake on the run. And that's why he's able to get such a good block out here. And we've seen that on a number of these snaps where there's play action, run blocking snap, and then they pull the ball and throw it. I really like that detail in this Giants offense, and I think it's a great way to maximize the strengths of Evan Neal and the rest of the offensive linemen. Yeah, absolutely. I, I even go take it one step further. I mean, look at Daniel Jones, this throw right here. You know what I mean? This is a great throw from Daniel Jones. Puts it only where David Sills can make that catch. Um, you know, that was a great job. And, you know, what men meant, I guess, man coverage, you're looking at trying to take advantage downfield. And Daniel Jones has some nice throws in this game. He looked really good. Um, and, and mainly because he had a good pocket. Like the only game I can recall where Daniel Jones had a sufficient pocket was against the new Orleans saints last year. And he had one of the best games of his career. He looked really sharp. So if he has a pocket, let's see what he can do. I'm, I'm curious. And, you know, we haven't seen him yet really with that much time. And I, hopefully it translates to the regular season against the first team defenses. But so far I am impressed. Um, you know, at, at just at what Evan Neal is showing us in this game. And also Daniel Jones is poised in the pocket with a clean one. Another nice pass blocking rep there. Yeah, beautiful snap there. He's beautiful really rep. Good. Just love the quick feet. 
Here you go. Once again, some run blocking. Look at how they created a whole just area of the field for Daniel Jones to run to with no pressure. Love that. And then this is well, cool. beautiful stunt pickup by the right side of the Giants offensive line on this snap. Oh, I mean, guys, I, I hope you're I hope you're here with us 20 minutes in just uh, unfathomably taken aback by the quality of this offensive line right now compared to last year's, even in a preseason game, I get it's early. But, you know, we're looking, we're, this is entirely different. This is, we've never, we haven't seen anything like this since we've started creating content about this team. Seriously. Yeah. And, and what I'm really trying to show here is that because I know that it's preseason, they're going up against lesser competition. I'm trying to show how the scheme is putting these guys in the best position to succeed because that will translate into the regular season. The scheme is going to be good regardless of who they're playing against. So, but here we go. We got, we got him getting beat a little bit here. I think what happens here is he doesn't push the uh, rusher far enough down in the pocket. I think his feet were a little slow on this play. If you notice his kick slide wasn't as good as it was on those earlier snaps that we were looking at. Fatigue and he does kind of get turned around here i yeah i think it fatigue has something to do with this and also i just he doesn't beat the rusher to the spot in time the rusher does have a good release off the line of scrimmage here so i think that's ultimately what happened on this play but mm -hmm. he does recover well when the rusher gets to the spot evan neal is still on his hip he's not hip riding though he's still trying to fight and get in front and ultimately does prevent the quarterback from being sacked not the worst play in the world. It's a decent recovery, decent way to prevent the quarterback from being sacked, but not the best snap either. There's definitely room for improvement with Evan Neal. Yeah, I mean, look, in, in this type of play, um, there's better hand fighting from the pass rusher. He gets that hook in there right there. He gets that arm free, and he has a free rush. But I'll say this, a quarterback with some pocket presence like Tyrod Taylor makes something out of nothing here. He steps up in the pocket, gets away from that, and escapes – um, and throws the ball downfield um, and, you know, close to being a completion, but a nice shot from Tyrod Taylor to extend that play. Good quarterbacks find ways to extend this play. So he did enough to seal the inside that way. Like it, it was, it wasn't a free rush to the quarterback, but um, definitely something he'll, he'll learn from. I mean, that was a crazy, did you just see that? I, I can't tell who that is at, at running back, but he just got tossed. <laughs> Hey, no, I, just, yeah, I believe it's Antonio Williams. I believe it's Antonio yeah. Williams. He does get thrown, but I will say he does a really good job providing a lot he of does. relief for Evan Neal there. It's a pretty good chip block. I'm not gonna lie. He got he gets thrown Absolutely. to the ground, but it's a good chip block, man. It, it provided the quarterback with it extra was. time in the pocket. So you're right. I mean, he just put himself in between Actually, them and bam. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, that's what he you want to see. The rusher like four yards mm -hmm. off of Evan Neal. Like that was a really solid chip block. It just looked a little woozy. <laughs> a little un unconventional, if I if I might say, but you got the job done. Just kind of speared him and got tossed, but you know, is what yeah. it is. Good job there. Whoever this pass rush is, really, no, that's really, a good rep uh, there. Yeah, that was hands. a good rep. Yeah, whoever this pass, I can't tell who the pass rusher is, but they love to use their hands. Maybe it's Joseph Asai. I don't know exactly. Might be. Joseph I mean, Asai. I like the swim move here by that pass rusher, but Evan Neal just counters it so well. Like this is a you great, see, great rep from Evan Neal. He's so patient with his hands right now like you can see like yeah. he's not he's not going in there and latching on right he's Good he's kind of giving too. a little stab he's giving a little stab trying to he, he's basically baiting these pass rushers into showing what they're trying to do showing what their move is going to be and then he's resetting and that's what andrew thomas does a lot by the way so i do really like this so far from him nice i mean look at that he's pushing guys it's a it's you know like you said run blocking and on a passing Sweet. play basically I yep, mean, he's exactly. Down look, at much, look, at this. look at how much space there is in that pocket. I mean, you know, this guy I think back the, that's the left guard there. The kind of right, the left guard maybe screwed up there, which had to uh, force Tyrod Taylor out of the pocket. But you know, if he had more time, he probably could have ran through that gap that Evan Neal created on that play. But look at this. yeah, again, mm -hmm. one on one block oh created through run blocking on the play action. Man, I'm just I'm loving this scheme right now. I think it's doing wonders for the offensive linemen to help them progress, and it's doing a lot to create some more uh, time in the pocket for the quarterbacks. I mean, look how much time Tyrod Taylor has back here. I mean, I, do, do we roll out? We can count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, the guy had nine seconds to make a play. There was only one guy he had to move out of the way of. Like, I mean, we haven't seen this in a long time, my friends. This, this is a this is a big difference. I know it's preseason, but you know. During preseason last year, we were punting three and outs every single time. At least we're moving the ball down the field. So this is this is good stuff. Still, I'm mean, looking at him. It's just great, moving around, running around. Also, Crazy. really great elusiveness from Tyrod Taylor. Got to give him credit there. Really great. Um, but yeah, man. Listen, we're seeing just a lot of great stuff in the scheme that's providing these quarterbacks with a lot of time in the pocket, and that's the, probably the most encouraging part of this to me, man. Is because 
I, I'm recognizing, and this is preseason, we're hyped because of Evan Neal playing so well. But, of course, we might – some people are going to say we're gassing him up a little bit too much because it's only preseason and he's going up against backups. I'm recognizing all of that. So what I want everybody to take away from what I've shown on this film is the fact that the scheme is what's letting these offensive linemen be so successful because that will translate regardless of the competition. You know, even if the Giants are going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Shaquille Barrett is, you know, having a field day on Daniel Jones, if they start implementing plays like this through the scheme against the Bucs or whoever it is with a great pass rush, the Titans in week one, they, they're a decent pass rushing team. That scheme is going to create a lot of opportunities. Just using run blocking in pass protection, that little combo from the play actions, rollouts and stuff too. That stuff puts your players in position to where even if they're not the best player on the field, they can act like the best player on the field because the scheme is putting them in position to be successful. And these are principles that we didn't see in Jason Garrett's scheme, but we are definitely seeing it sprinkled all throughout uh, the scheme of Mike Kafka and Brian Dable. And it's only preseason. They're not even showing us all of their schemes. So just get ready. I think there's a lot more to unlock within this offensive scheme come the regular season. And I do think that because of how great the scheme is – really putting together the pocket for the quarterbacks, it's going to be a significant improvement in terms of offensive line play for the New York Giants in the 2022 regular season. Yeah, absolutely, my friends. But I hope you enjoyed this video, checking out Evan Neal with us. We'd love to hear your thoughts below, as always, in the YouTube comment section. This is a different offensive line entirely pretty much except for andrew uh, thomas who's the la who's the holdover from the gettleman and uh te tenure and then you got mark lewinsky you got feliciano who's still injured you got shane lemieux who's injured now uh max garcia play a lot yesterday ben bredesen's also injured so this is an interesting situation where the the giants still have a pr are looking pretty good um the film you, you can speak for yourselves but it looked a lot better to me than in previous years and evan neal looked like he took a tremendous jump forward from week one of preseason to week two so i am very excited about that but as always hope you guys have, fa have a fantastic rest of your day enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe as always and we'll catch you guys on the next fireside giants episode